G'day aeroplane fans, this is Jim coming to you from the nation's capital, Canberra, that's Australia by the way. Now today's episode we're going to be looking at two things, firstly how to change out your data card in the uh, Garmin GNS 430 was, and secondly we're going to look at some IFR weather decision making. Hope you enjoy it. Oh yeah, by the way I pulled this hat out of my uh, drawer of old hats, it's a uh, Joint Defence Facility Narunga Hat. Um, I was posted there back in the early 90s flying um, DSP, that's Defence Support Program, uh, Ballistic Missile Early Warning Satellites as part of the American Ballistic uh, Missile Warning System. They had a um, ground station at Woomera and I was there for two years with the family. Wonderful place. Yeah. Actually I had two um, proposed titles for the uh, for the second part of the video uh, and they are flying through cumulonimbus cloud is it really that bad or better decision making in IFR flight planning especially weather yeah <laughs> I chose the latter yep Okay, we're in. I've just taken the covers partly off, but we can still get into the aeroplane. Now, let's have a look at the GNS 430. Um, we've got two data cards. The first one is on the right-hand side as you're facing it, and that is the terrain data card. Um, that one we don't worry about. This one here is called the navigational database data card, and that's the one that has to be upgraded every 28 days to be IFR legal. So to bring it out, we simply push in the middle, it comes out this little hook type thing, if you have a look at that. And all you do is just pull it out. Like that. And that's the card there. And that's one that needs to be updated every 28 days, so you need a, um, a uh, subscription to Jeppesen to update these. It costs around about, well, I think it's about $600 a year. So anyway, let's go home and I'll put it into the old computer, fire it up and I'll show you how to update it. Cheers. Okay, first things first, get your computer fired up. Good grief, who's that bloke? I think I'll turn that off real quick. Now what you will need is an adapter for your data card, and this is it here. Now being aviation, of course, it'll cost a bomb. This one costs around about $195. Oh, I need two hands to do this. Just rest it there for a sec. And this basically just fits straight into the side of or any USB port into your, in your computer. Now, the this is the um, nav data card. So this um, uh, the silver side and there's the title side. This basically goes this way with the Jeppesen um, up upwards and then goes straight into your computer. But let me get rid of uh, Steph's very very interesting video. His uh, trip around the coast. Let's just get rid of that. Now you do need to download a um, thing called Jepson distribution. So let's just bring that up. Distribution manager it's called. Oh what a wonderful looking aeroplane on the front. How did that get there? Okay, username. I'm going to stop it for a sec so you don't see my username. Here we go. Now, what I'm going to do is put the Jepson thingy bob in the USB port. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. And the little blue light starts to flash and do all sorts of things. Now we have the Whiskey November, uh, sorry, November Whiskey Foxtrot, which is my aircraft. Um, that's the uh, Garmin GNS 400 series, 430 was. You have a 
option of download only or transfer to device. So I transfer it to the device, which is that there. So let's go and push that. Oh, sorry, have a look at the database. Effective 28th of January to the 25th of February. So hit that. Silver label, yes it is, continue. And then you see this thing doing its business. And what you see is start downloading, checking, transferring, erasing a bit of data as well. And this normally takes oh, probably about 45 seconds, so it's not long. So I'll just um, stop it there until it's finished. Okay, it's nearly finished. It goes through three processes here. It goes deleting, writing, and then verifying. So this is the verifying stage. Um, and again, it's only taking like about 30 or 40 seconds to do this. So you see what happens when it's finished. Oh, blank checking, writing, I lied before. Anyway, there's a few things, but they don't take long. There you go. So no more updates this cycle. So now the, um, the um, database is updated and it's valid up until the 25th of February. So that's all there is to it. And then you just remove the device. Let's just remove that device and pull it out. There we go. All done. So that's it. Oh, one more thing. Um, once you take the data card out of the Jepson thing, all you need to do then is put it straight back into your... Uh, hang on, which way does it go? That's right. Just put it straight back into your... Um, Garmin and um, as soon as you fire it up it'll update the database and then you'll see as it fires up the um, uh, the uh, thing come up saying that the database uh, expiry date is the 25th of February that's a nav database so that's all there is to it folks simple as hey who is this guy Really interesting videos actually, I'll really enjoy them. <laughs> now the second part of this video is decision making uh, with IFR flight plans, specifically weather. Now this last week I had two really good flights um, organised. First one was a friend of mine, uh, ex Raffi, who wanted to get up to Maitland on Thursday night to surprise his daughter at her 18th um, birthday dinner. So we were going to fly up there at 3 o'clock, um, stay for a few hours, go to the restaurant and uh, leave Maitland. Sorry, this is from Canberra to Maitland in the Hunter Valley, and then leave Maitland at about 8.30, get back to Canberra around about 10. So everything was okay. I mean, the IFR um, conditions, um, the weather conditions were, were IFR. The minima at, um, or the cloud base at Maitland required an alternate, and I was just gonna use Canberra. Um, and also the conditions had it um, 200 feet above the GNSS um, approach minima. So we may have got in, or we should have got in, but for those who know Maitland, it's a 2305 runway and the wind was 150 at 14 knots. Now the Mooney's demonstrated crosswind component, maximum crosswind component was 11 knots or is 11 knots. And I know, I know, you can go over that. Um, that's just the manufacturer's uh, demonstrated crosswind component. But together with all the other um, factors, um, that was beyond my comfort level, so unfortunately I had to cancel. Second flight was today, um, going from uh, Canberra to Maitland again, funnily enough, and then from Maitland to Cootamundra to drop uh, a gentleman off there, wait for a couple of hours on the ground, and then fly back to Maitland, then back to Canberra. Now, both these flights, by the way, I was sharing costs with, with both guys. Now, um, heading out this morning uh, wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, it was raining, um, but the IFR conditions were okay. But coming back, we would have leave, left um, Cootamundra at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, or 0300 Zulu, and this is what I saw. These are the conditions. Now, if we look at where we are, um, let me put my glasses on first. There is Canberra right there, so it's in C. Cootamundra is in area A, and Maitland is in area B2, and we'd fly through area B as well. Now, so A, B, and C, let's have a look at conditions. From 2300 to 0500, in other words, right in the period that we were gonna fly from Cootamundra to Maitland to Canberra. Okay, isolated towering cumulus, six to above 10. Isolated CB, which is cumulonimbus cloud, six to above 10, that's in A, in B, we also had a few issues. Isolated um, towering cumulus, three to above 10. Uh, isolated CBs, base is 5,000 um, inland, but 3,000 to above 10. 
and also in area C, um, uh, towering cumulus, cumulonimbus, moderate turbulence by 5,000. Um, basically, it was thunderstorms um, and towering cumulus cloud. Now, I've had a look outside and there's a bit of sunshine around, but there's a lot of, of building cloud out there that looks pretty uh, um, threatening. So rather than exploring the Mooney's wing strength, which is pretty strong, uh, I decided, no, this, this is not good. Uh, and from a risk management and a risk assessment point of view, it just didn't fit. Um, it was too risky. Um, a lot of the time we may have been in cloud and of course you can't see um, cumulonimbus or, or towering cumulus while you're in cloud, while you're in um, IMC. So this just had hazard written all over it, uh, unacceptable risk. So again, I had to cancel. Now I really wanted to do both these flights, but it was silly um, to do either of them because of varying reasons, but they both um, uh, exceeded either the risk or my own personal risk. So they just didn't happen. So there you go. That's making decisions that could probably save your life. Flying into a CB cloud is no fun from what I understand, although very few people have done it and have uh, lived to tell the tale. So there you go. So <laughs> grounded for a few days, but uh, Thursday is looking good, so I might get up. Hope you found this uh, video useful. Catch ya.